Now that you're caught up, let's jump right into where we left off. We have our die deposited and we're going to be borrowing. So this shows us based on our collateral, this is the amount that we are able to borrow. So we can see we can borrow 7,500 die. It's important to remember that this is the maximum amount that we are allowed to borrow. So if we borrow the maximum amount, we are going to be dangerously close to the liquidation threshold. So let's be a little bit careful and make sure that we don't do that. We can see we cannot borrow that much Ethereum because it has a very high utilization rate. And with any of these tokens that are volatile, I would be very careful about borrowing them because if one of them moons or they go up, you know, they go up a lot in price, then there's a risk of liquidation. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to borrow a stable coin. In this case, let's go ahead. Let's look at this. We don't want to borrow true USD because that's a really high APY. So we're going to borrow USD coin. And this is a really important thing to understand. First, we can see that it also has a relatively high utilization rate. So we can see most of the USDC is being lent out. So this is our available liquidity. This is the price. Again, it's a stable coin. It's about a dollar. And now we have the option, as I mentioned in the previous one, we have our stable borrow APY, which is 6%, and our variable, which is 3.99. And here's something that's really important to consider. Looking at the utilization rate of 88%, we can see that if that were to go higher, you know, if let's go back, we can see the variable APY can go really high. So we go back into here. If this utilization rate were to go in the mid 90s, this APY would go much, much higher. So if I, if I needed to borrow this for some reason, I would probably go with stable borrow APY, which is what we're going to do. Then this down here, we this is a really cool thing that, that Ave does. Now, if we move this little bar, it shows how much we're going to be borrowing. And it shows us the health factor, which we see here. And as we move this, the health factor gets lower and lower and lower. If this health factor gets to one, you know, the highest we can go is 1.07. If it goes to one, then we're going to get liquidated. So that's very risky. So the maximum we can borrow is, remember, 75%, which is this much. So the, that's the maximum amount we could borrow. 10,000 deposited. That's right around 700, 7,500. So this really is just kind of how you, you have to de decide for yourself how much you want to borrow. If the, the lower you go, obviously the safer, the higher you go, the riskier. It just depends on how much you want to borrow compared to the amount of collateral that you have. Let's do, let's do a health factor of two. Basically, let's just do 4,000. There we go. Health factor of two. Exactly. Continue. Now we need to choose our APY here. And if we look at the utilization rate, which is pretty high, then we can see that the if this were to go much higher, the borrow APY would go up pretty rapidly. And I think it could very easily go above 6%. So I would probably choose the stable APY. And it is important to know that the stable APY is not stable to an unlimited degree. It In the short term, it's stable, but in the long term, it can still be rebalanced. So it's safer, but it's still not foolproof. And then if we click it, it gives us an explanation to say the same thing. Stable rate is fixed rate in the short term can be rebalanced in the long term depending on market changes, but the stable rate is not as impacted by fluctuations in the reserve. So that is what this is referring to, is the percentage of reserve that's being loaned out. You do the variable rate, it just shows that it can increase and decrease depending on the amount of liquidity in the reserve. So it's still safer to do the stable, which is what we're going to do here. And then here we have, this gives us a little overview. So we have two transaction details. We're going to borrow 4,000 USDC. We're going to pay 6.03% interest which is stable, and our health factor is going to be 1.99. So that's pretty safe. In fact, we would need the, the value of DAI to go by, down by half or the value of USDC to, to basically double for us to get liquidated, which is very unlikely. Let's go to borrow, and it will open MetaMask, and here we go. So there we go. We have our gas fees, and let's just click confirm and wait for it to go through. Perfect. And then we can add USDC to our browser wallet. Let's do that. Add token. Open up MetaMask and go to assets. And we have a little bit of ETH, no ETH, no DAI. We still have 10,000 A DAI and 4,000 USDC. So that is perfect. Now let's exit out of that. And let's go back to our dashboard. Now we can see on our dashboard, we have, the, we have just under $10,000 in collateral. We've borrowed just under $4,000. We've got a nice health factor still. We are using 50% of our borrowing power. You don't want to take that all the way up to 100% because then you're going to be at a higher risk of liquidation. We can see our current loan to value. 
And we could click on that and it could give us an explanation if we wanted to, but we already understand it because we've covered it. Great, so we can see that this is how much we've borrowed here. And something you'll notice because we have a 0% APY in DAI, we have a 6% APY in USDC. Now we owe 4,000.001 USDC. However, in our wallet, we only have 4,000 USDC. So that's a problem if we want to go and repay this. But let's do this. Let's wrap this up by repaying it. Let's go to here. We're going to do maximum amount, continue. Probably going to give us a warning that, we're, yep, there we go. We don't have enough funds to repay the full amount. We're going to pay all of it though, because we're racking up interest right now. Now, this is the first time we are using USDC in Aave. So just like we learned with the Uniswap tutorial, we need to first approve it. You actually didn't see me do the approval with DAI because I did it when I borrowed DAI three days ago. So that is pending. We will wait for that to go through. And there we go. We have our approval transaction. Now let's do one more transaction to actually repay as much as we can. And there we go. It is finished. Perfect. So let's go back to our dashboard. We can still see that I've borrowed a tiny amount still. So ordinarily what we would need to do in this case is we would need to purchase some USDC in order to pay this off because what's going to happen is it's not going to let me withdraw all of this. So let's try that. Let's withdraw our die. Let's say I want to withdraw the maximum amount. We're going to click withdraw. Everything looks good there. Confirm. Wait for the transaction to go through. I'm going to see my A die go away and I'm going to have some die because of it. But it's not going to let me withdraw all of it because I still have an outstanding loan. There we go. It's finished. So let's go back to dashboard. And what we see is I still have a little bit of die deposited. So 222 die, which seems a bit excessive that it wouldn't let me withdraw that for this much USDC, but that's okay. Now, if we were on mainnet, what you would need to do is go through here and you would need to basically put some USDC in your wallet. Uh, either buying it on an exchange, a decentralized exchange, or maybe do, transferring it from Coinbase or something like that in order to be able to get your DAI back. Now, your task for this lesson is to go through, do all the things that I did on here, borrow some funds, deposit some funds, play around with it, have all the fun you can on the test net. And you can also check it out on Compound because Co Compound Finance also works on Coven. So if we go Compound Finance. So if you go to Compound.Finance, we open up the app here, connect to MetaMask, it should automatically connect to Coven. Yep, it did. Connect to the Coven testnet. We can do the same thing here with Compound, and we can get some C tokens if we wanted to. There's a lot of different things that you can play around with. I'm not sure why it's taking such a long time to load, but that's okay. So you can come here, play around with it on the Coven testnet. And then once you've played around with that on Compound and on Aave, and kind of learned how it works as much as possible, then in our next lesson, we're going to go ahead and do a stablecoin deep dive. So I'll see you there.